Now that we've set up our single post template and already added our project posts, it's time to add in their content and make them look great. Go back to the WordPress dashboard and click Posts. WordPress posts work a little differently than pages. Posts appear in reverse chronological order, with the newest posts at the top, and can be categorized, tagged, and archived. This allows you to organize your posts and gives you control over which posts to display and where to display them. It also helps your visitors find what they're looking for. Click to edit the first post. Hold down Command or Control when clicking, so it opens in a new tab. In the panel, under Categories, click Add New Category. Type in the category name and click Add New Category. For future projects using this category, you'll just need to check it off, since it's already been added. Note that you can select more than one category, if applicable. I'll also uncheck the Uncategorized category, so it doesn't display as a category on the Portfolio Archive page, which we'll build soon. Next, scroll down a bit and add a featured image. Click here and upload or select the image you'd like to highlight for this project. Click Set Featured Image to insert it. As you know, we set these featured images to display dynamically on each single post page, and we'll also set it to display on the Portfolio Archive page later on in the course. Last, we'll add the project excerpt, which we also set earlier to dynamically display at the top of the single post template. Just add it here. Now let's design this project post with Elementor. Click Edit with Elementor. As you can see, at the top and bottom of the post, we have everything we set up in the single post template, including the dynamic information. Now let's design the layout and style of the post content, which will dynamically appear in each single post page, via the post content widget we set up earlier. Create a new section and give it a two column structure. I'd like the left column to be a little wider than the right. So just drag the column over to the right or select the left column and type in a precise column width. Drag in a heading and type in about the project. In style, we'll leave the text color as primary and change the typography to secondary headline. Drag in the text editor below and type in a description for the project. The default styles work here, so we'll leave them as is. Go back to the heading and in advanced, unlink and add a little padding to the bottom. Next, drag in a divider widget. In Add Element, select Text and type Client's Quote. We can't see the text yet, but we'll take care of that in style. Change the text color to Accent, Typography to Accent Text, and Position to Align Left. Change the divider color to Accent. Scroll down in the editor for a better view and drag in a block quote widget. Switch skin to Quotation. Type in a satisfied client's quote and under Author, the client's name. You won't see it yet because the default color is set to secondary, which in our case is white. For the Twitter button, select Icon for View and Link for Skin. Let's style the author name first to make it visible. Change the color to Primary and customize the typography by selecting Accent Text and clicking the pencil icon. Change the weight to 800. The default text color for the content is perfect, but we'll make a custom change to the typography. Select the body text global font style. Click the pencil icon and change the size to 16 and style to italic. Let's make the Twitter button size a drop larger. Switch the color to custom and the text color to accent to keep to the website style. We need another divider. To save some time and work, right-click and duplicate the divider. Drag it over to the second column, replace the text with Project Images, and just like that, the divider's done. Next, we'll add in a Pro Gallery widget. 
drag it in, and click here to select images for this project. Click Create a New Gallery. Add captions for each photo. Click Insert Gallery. Now let's change the layout. Change columns to two and increase the spacing. Next we'll set the overlay, which is a layer that shows above each image in the gallery. Set the title to caption. We don't see anything because the overlay is by default turned off in the normal state and only visible on hover, like this. Let's style it. Change the overlay hover color to accent. In content, decrease the padding around the caption and change the title color to secondary and typography to accent text. Hover over an image to preview the overlay. Now click the image. It opens in the lightbox and we'll see soon how to style the lightbox settings for the entire website. All right, we're just about done. Select the section and add some padding to the top and bottom to give it a little breathing room. Then select the left column and add padding on the right. Finally, select the right column and change the padding to zero to align with the rest of the site. Okay. It's time to see how it looks on mobile. Now that we have just one column, we don't need much padding on the right. So change the padding to 10 all the way around. Scroll down and select the gallery and change columns to two. That's better. Update the page and click preview. Looks great. It's really an impressive way to showcase all your projects. Now we can go ahead and update the other projects in the same manner. So back in posts, like before, click to edit the next one. Add categories, a featured image, and an excerpt to each post. Make sure to click Update at the top to save as you go. Repeat this process for all your posts so they have their own featured image, excerpt, and are assigned to their relevant categories. Great, let's delete the Hello World post since we won't be needing it anymore. To update the content for each post, click Edit on the post and then Edit with Elementor and style it as we did before. To save time and stay consistent, you can save the first post as a template, which we learned how to do earlier in the course, and soon we'll learn how to import and modify templates. Keep watching to learn how to display a listing of all posts on the portfolio page.